Hello everyone. We're going to get creative today. Our theme for this month is cookies. And someone, who shall not be named, me, uh, messed up and got the order and sort of did a cookie sort of theme last week. But I did have junk mail and stuff in there as well. So I had to think of something else. So I'm getting extremely creative with the cookie. We're going to talk with what I call faux cookie dough. That'll be towards the end. And just cookie stuff. What could you do? Cookie cutters. And what could you use those for? Well, I had this wonderful idea to do this. And then I realized someone decided to clean their kitchen out a couple weeks ago. And I threw all my cookie cutters away. Because I'm not going to be baking cookies anymore. So, we are going to use faux cookie cutters. We'll use these as cookie cutters. So, if you don't have cookie cutters, just find objects around your house that you might have. You know, like those old travel soap dishes? Rectangle cookie cutter. Square cookie cutter. So, just different things that can be used as our faux cookie cutters. One of the things to use, of course, is ink pads. You can use any kind of ink pads. These happen to be chalk ink pads. But you can use your children's ink pads. You can use washable markers and put it down on paper and spritz it with water. You can use your Tim Holtz Distress, ox, uh, distress Inks and Oxides. You can use anything you want. So I'm just going to, and this is nothing new to you all. You all know all this. You just ink something up. And you can use your faux cookie cutters. And this is sort of light. Maybe I need to switch to the darker color. So that you can see it. And you just, well, apparently, like I said, I have not used these ink pads for very for a long time. That one's a little dried out, of course. That's the way life is, right? But anyway, you can use whatever and make impressions. You can use. If they were actual cookie cutters, they would work better. The ones that have the cute little shapes and faces in them would be awesome. But you can see how you can take a sheet of paper, a book page, piece of fabric, your canvas, whatever you want, and you can stamp and make your pages. Well, that's idea number one. How can you use cookies, in quotes, but cookie cutters to do? Use them for stamping. Then I also want to give you the idea, and of course, along with, you don't have to just use your stamp pads, and yes, I'm using my old yucky stuff here. Use paint. Any kind of paint. It doesn't matter to do the same thing. And watch me get paint everywhere in a minute, and y'all gonna laugh at me. But, you can stamp with your paint. So there's all kinds of things that you can do by using. So use ink pads, use paint, use wa markers. Washable markers, you use water to activate. If you're using a permanent marker, use alcohol to activate. But stamping. And that will work wonderful to have any type of designs that you can come up with and use. Then... Also, use those cookie cutters, and I did use other things. Anybody ever recognize these? You know those letter things? You can go to the Dollar Tree, now it's $1.25 for a whole set. Uh, this was a scrubby. I took the loofah off and I used it to do some things with gel printing and paper and uh, print painty papers. But it's just a foam pad. I kept this one solid because it's a flower. But look at this one. Use your cookie cutters to imprint on the back of these foams, and you end up getting some images that you can stamp. So not only can you use your cookie cutters to make your papers, you can use these foam blocks, $1.25, and it's usually about 20 of them in there because they double up on a couple letters. But if you're lucky, you'll get like 26 pieces. And look at that. Is that just like, like so cool? To be able to make your own stance and just using things around your house. Like cookie cutters or faux cookie cutter stuff. 
And you're like, okay, how did you do that? This is all I did. You take, if you're using a cookie cutter, you're going to push it in. To make it easier, you can use a hair dryer or a heat tool and heat it up, but I don't do that. And of course, I've got some paint still left on this, so it's going to show the paint, which is good so you can see the image. I'm just pressing it in there. And look. Making shapes. Now, can you imagine having a little cookie cutter? Like, for instance, I have dogs. I used to be a dog groomer. And I also sold dog treats and natural products for dogs. So, I had bone-shaped cookie cutters. Put a bone shape. Star, heart. How about Mickey Mouse's face? And put it in a foam. And then when you go to stamp, you're going to have... And you can use your paint for this, too. This is going to be a little thick, so bear with me. But, you know, because it's a little thick, it's not in there. You're not going to see that. So I didn't thin my paint out. See, look there. I just pressed that in there just then. So using your cookie cutters or shapes, you can use them to make your own stamps your own uh, mixed media type things and prints. You can use these on jelly plates, you can use it on papers, whatever. So that's another idea that you have. Now, third idea. Cookie dough. Remember I said, let's use cookie dough in our crafting. I am talking about faux cookie dough. Look what I made with faux cookie dough. These are beads. And yes, they'll come right off of there. I'll leave them on there. Anybody guess what my faux cookie dough is made of? Look, at I took this faux cookie dough and covered it in aluminum foil to give me a metal texture. And I can use paint, alcohol inks, permanent markers, whatever on there as well. And so I actually have some of using the same thing as a base. And I wrapped it around to half. But anyway... Anybody take a guess? Toilet paper and cheap old school glue. Everybody has toilet paper in their house. And if you're a crafter, you've got school glue or if you have kids. You can use any kind of glue. It's just school glue is cheaper and thinner. You take your toilet paper and your container and you just sort of, you know, I tear it up roughly, but you really don't have to tear it up. Put it in, add glue, stir it up, and you make your cookie dough. And then you can form it into beads. I put them on toothpicks because I can stick them in a piece of styrofoam. They'll dry. And then I can use the toothpicks to hold to paint. I use nail polish. I use paints, alcohol inks, pretty much any of your stuff that you can use. Your watercolor paints, it'll be a little lighter color. And I left these with a lot of texture. And that's some rust on that one, by the way. Uh, this has a lot of texture, and I did that on purpose. You can work it and get it smooth, but there you go. So there is our cookie dough technique. That's my third idea that has to do with the cookie thing. Now, this latter one does not have anything to do with cookies, but I forgot about this idea, and I found some of these, and I thought, you know what? I'm going to throw this out here. Look at these little beads. Do you know what these beads are made from? Who remembers crazy straws? You can buy packs of those at the dollar store for nothing. I got fuzzy from my fabric. You can tell I had it stored in the wrong place. Those are beads made from crazy straws. And I have painted them with permanent markers or colored them with permanent markers. This one I used a light color fingernail polish on. But I have made beads from them. Just by cutting up crazy straws. You can go ahead and put fabric and metals and beads on them. Make boho be uh, beads out of whatever. But how cheap and how cool is that? Now, you're saying, well, I don't have wire. I don't have this. Well, you can go get, you don't need to go buy them. Because I've got something that I use to make these beads. The wire part in them. Of something you've got at your house right now. Don't know if you'll recognize it. Yeah, and I've got them sort of trying to rust some of them, so... Some of them have rust pieces on them because I'm rusting them. But anybody have any idea what these are? Paper clips. You can see it it's right there. Can you sort of see it if it was folded back up? I took these and 
this little old paper clip pieces. There's one that I didn't have a wire in. And you can feed that through there. You just feed it through the hole. And the curved one you might have to shove a little bit, but you can get it in there. It'll go in there in just a minute if I push. But that's what I did with all these. Those are paper clips. And when I put them in there on the ends, I twisted the ends to make my little connectors of the paper clip. Of course, use lightweight wire as well. Works just as good. This one, I think, has a piece of wire in it because I needed it longer. Paper clip stretched out wouldn't have been long enough. But if you don't have any wire, unbend your paper clips and use them. So idea number four. Yes, this is quick, short, and sweet, but I think that's what you all like. But just sort of to recap, didn't have anything to do with cookies, but I wanted to throw that idea out there of the beads made from crazy straws and using paper clips for your wire. Make cookie dough. Use those to make beads. You've got molds. You can push those into molds as well. We've got using our cookie cutters to press imprints into foam. And a good thing using for foam. Okay, just push that right in there. Now I've got an imprint. Are the cheap puzzle pieces, alphabet puzzle pieces you can get for kids. Push them in there. Using your cookie cutters to do that. And then, of course, the first idea, quick, everybody knows how to do. Using your cookie cutters with ink pads, inks, paints, markers, whatever, to make stamping, to make papers that you can use. There's my quick, short, and sweet. I appreciate you all joining me today. Enjoy the hop. Have a great day.